Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to show, how, show you how to build in a downtime period into your rent roll. Uh, then once we've done that into later videos, we can talk about free rent periods and build out more complex market leasing assumptions and all kinds of good stuff like that. So let's go. Last time we spoke, we were talking about the rent roll and we were collecting 20 bucks and we started the lease we ended the lease month 18, we started in month 19, but there was no downtime period. So let's start to build that out. So to do that, I'm going to first put in some of the stuff I need for a market leasing assumption. I'm going to put in that we have a renewal probability of say 65%. And I'm going to say we have rent when new, when renewal, when weighted and <clears throat> I'm going to have a downtime period and to make life interesting I'll say that's 25 I'll, just, I'll make that 25 and that's 21 and then the weighted would be 25 times 1 minus the 65% plus 21 times the 65% close parentheses, so that's weighted 2240. I'll link the market rent to that. So now we have a look at the null probability. And as long as I'm observing color coding rules, I'll make that an input and that an input and that an output. Good stuff. And again, you don't need to format it as you go along, but helps me keep track of what's what. The downtime will be six and I'll gray that out because there's no downtime by definition. Uh, or when, when it is down uh, on renewal, there's not gonna be any downtime, right? Because basically there'll be like six months of downtime on a new lease, but on a renewal lease, it's, <clears throat> it's not down at all. So if I do a weighted calculation on that, I come up with say, Six percent. Well, actually, wait. I gotta put dollar signs on some stuff. Dollar sign on C eights. Bring that down. That rounds off to two point one. Um, yeah, because thirty five percent of um, six is about a two. But of course, when you do downtime, you usually need to make this rounded. And You'll see why I'm rounding it in a moment. I'm going to round this to no spaces after the decimal. Now it's rounded. <coughs> Pardon me. Which means the new lease now, instead of starting on month 19, is going to start later, right? It's going to basically start month 21. We'll see why that's relevant in a moment, but I'm, I'm not going to adjust it just yet. Um, actually, you know what? I will. I'm going to have it use whatever the rent would be in month 21. Because again, there's going to be some downtime and the lease is going to get signed in month 21. So there's going to be a blend. It's not going to use month 19. Like we're going to do a weighted calculation, but it's going to use month 21's rent because that's when the waiting ends. And I, I think that's reasonable. So now it's going to start month 21. That's fine. So then here, we're going to have potential rent before adjustment. Which now should show what the rent would be in month 19. Actually, it's still doing it. Well, you know what? That's fine. You know what? I'm not going to worry about this just yet. Let me use month 19's rent. The downtime, though, usually people refer to as absorption and turnover vacancy. Oops. <laughs> vacancy. And then we're going to do a little if statement here to make the adjustment. I'm going to say if and function, the month we're in is greater than 
Actually, you know what? I do need this. Expiration date or the month I'm in is less than the lease start date than one, if not zero. Here. So let me add back the two months. Cool. So what that would do is it basically say, if you're between the lease expiration and the start date, give me a one, if not give me a zero, and I'll put dollar signs on the C20 and dollar signs on the C21. I'll take that, drag that across, and we should see that it gives a bunch of zeros, except in the two months when it's down. To make the adjustment, I will now multiply that by the 23 bucks times the negative one, because I need to flip that sign. So now you've got that. And then I've got potential rent. And now I should show that it's 20 bucks, except when it's not. So it's 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. And then there's a $23 adjustment. So basically now what we have is kind of like the potential market rent and that we have the difference basically between potential rent and like contract rent. Or to put it another way, you have a top line, which is potential rent. And then you're going to show the vacancy adjustment and then you're going to you're going to kind of go from there. So let me finish the thought. <clears throat> so I don't even need that line. Let's let's keep that called potential rent because that's probably a better way of showing it. So that's potential rent. So now scrolling down a little bit, just as I've got this math for potential rent, I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to do absorption and turnover vacancy. And again, I will call this absorption and turnover vacancy. And now, instead of line 25, it's using line 26. I take that, I bring that across, and you can see there's a $38,000 adjustment there. So I'll call this dollar amount. And just to be consistent, I'll make this dollar amount too. And so now the fun part is flipping over to cash flow. I've got the general vacancy factor and I've got potential gross revenue. I'm going to throw in an extra line there. And I'm going to throw in a line that I will call absorption and turnover vacancy. Vacancy. And I'm going to link that back to that rent roll screen. Bring that across. So now we've got a $38,000 absorption and turnover vacancy. But here's the interesting part. Usually you take off a general vacancy of 10% in a given theoretical year. That's 20 of 200 is 10%. But in year two, we're not going to take off the absorption and turnover vacancy of 38 and also have a general vacancy of 21. Also, I need to fix this EGR calculation. So first off, the EGR calculation is now adjusted. Instead of being line six plus line eight, it's line six plus line seven plus line eight. I could do a sum function, but you get the idea. I'll take that, drag that across. But now in this year, I don't want to double count. Let me throw in a line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically say either you use 10%, you basically adjust the general vacancy by the turnover vacancy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say take the general vacancy and adjust that by the $38,000. So in this case, normally we just take off 10%. Um, if I subtract the 38, I'm basically doubling up and now we're at 155. So we want to reduce the general vacancy 
by the amount of the turnover vacancy, and if it's less than zero, we stop. Or to put it another way, we take the 21, we subtract the 38. That would then make this positive. And then what we do is we say, if this, oops, if this thing If this thing is greater than zero, in other words, if you took off too much vacancy, then zero, otherwise, do what you were going to do otherwise. So in other words, don't double count. Now, if this is only like negative 10,000, and I'm hard coding in that value to show you, if that's only negative 10, then that would be negative 11. You'd add up for a total of negative 21. If that's negative 38, it takes off nothing. And of course, if this is zeroed out, then it's just negative 21. Awesome. So now I can take this bit of math, I can drag this to the right, I can drag this to the left, and now the point is, and here's kind of the punchline of this conversation, what I've essentially done is a couple things. The first thing is I said, there's gonna be a weighted average for rent, and there's gonna be a weighted downtime. I'm gonna round that off to the nearest month because it's easier to work with whole months than this. You start doing partial months, it's like, are we starting the lease mid-month? That's screwy, you're gonna drive people nuts. Then I said, in this case, we have the rent on a year-by-year -year basis, we have the vacancy on a year-by-year, -year, and I'm working everything in years. I don't have to, I could do everything in months, but I'm just doing it in years because I think it's easier to show it that way. Again, people disagree. I'm not gonna make this a war about it. Later, we can convert it all the months if we have the time and the interest. There's an absorption and turnover vacancy adjustment in that period. It then layers in here. And then basically the point is if the absorption and turnover is so big, it swamps the general vacancy. We don't do a general vacancy. If it partially swamps it, we show the partial. And well, that's pretty much the idea. So again, if absorption and turnover is huge, it we zeroed out if it's partial it just adjusts the general vacancy um and there it is and i think that's kind of neat and relatively flexible um in later videos we'll talk about free rent we'll talk about tenant improvements leasing commissions we'll add multiple tenants but i think you see where i'm going with this i'm starting to make a cash flow statement that looks well more real in any event, if you're interested in content like this, or if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me at josh at kahrrealestate.com. Or if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every few weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a live webinar. I also deliver classes on site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website at carrealestate.com. Thanks again, and keep on building better models.